Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my January 2024 reading wrap-up. If you're not already aware, I do weekly entertainment wrap-ups of everything I read, watch, and listen to, but today we're just talking about the books. If this is the first of my videos you're watching, this is not my normal setup. I am currently in Paris, and my camera is currently set on a tripod on the bed, so if at any point the view changes slightly, uh, that's because you're not exactly stable. Sometimes when you're traveling, you just have to do what you have to do to make it work. As I'm recording this, it's Thursday, February 1st, and we arrived on the 29th of January, which was Sunday, I think. Nope, Monday. It was Monday. We left on Sunday. We got here on Monday. So we've been here a couple of days. We've been to the Louvre. We've been to Notre Dame. We walked up the Eiffel Tower. We've been walking around a lot. Our legs and feet actually hurt a lot from that. But we're exploring. We're adventuring. We're having fun times. But that's not what this video is about, so I'm going to start with my nerdy hardcore stats and charts and then get into what I read. Also, if you hear any random noises during this video, I'm in a hotel. So, like, those are gonna happen. It's just life. Also, I put chapter markers in all of my videos, so if there's anything you need to go back to or skip over, all of that is down below for you. On the way down to the description, if you make sure that you are subscribed, that would be very nice of you, and maybe drop a like on this video as well so that YouTube knows that you enjoy my content and maybe you'll see it more often in your feed. Also, as a reminder, this year I decided to partake in the Bookish Bingo Board from Hell challenge that was started by Leanne over at Literary Diversions, and I will talk about how I'm doing on that at the end of the video. In January, I read 17 things for a total of 4,429 pages. That takes into account converting audiobook minutes to pages, so 1,796 of those pages were actually about 54 hours of audio. The age breakdown for these books was 11 adult books, 5 YA books, and 1 kids book. I read 13 novels, 2 anthologies, and 2 novellas. This month, the biggest chunk of what I read was fantasy, non-fiction, spec fic, and horror, followed by contemporary mystery thriller and historical fiction. If you just buy page count, you can tell the contemporaries were short. Just over half of these books were from the library, but I also read books from an independent bookstore, publishers, and something I already owned. I read six audiobooks, six paperbacks, and five hardcovers. The biggest chunk of my books were in the 200 to 299 page range, and over half were published this decade. I read seven books from each male and female authors, and also a non-binary author, and a mixed anthology, and more than half of the protagonists were female. In terms of setting, just less than half were set in the US, followed by the UK and other worlds, then a book each from Canada, Bulgaria, Norway, and Palestine. In terms of diversity of subject matter, a big chunk had none because I had to focus on reading older books, but there was some queer rep, translated books, a book concerning race, and some intersectional reads. In terms of star ratings, this month I had two two-star reads, one three-star read, seven four-star reads, five 4.5 star reads, and two 5 star reads. Let's start with the lowest rated read and work our way up to the highest, shall we? Now the two 2 star reads I had were actually books 2 and 3 in the Remember Me series. I definitely read the first book in this series when I was younger. This is actually something I wanted to revisit from my teenage years. And I also read that one this month, obviously, to get to 2 and 3. 2 and 3 have very different tones from the first one, and um also fall into some tropes that I don't particularly enjoy, and also really strain the imagination in some ways. So I don't really want to talk about them too, too much because I think you should just pretend that they never happened. These ones are both by Christopher Pike, obviously, and they're called The Return and The Last Story. And if you're going to read Remember Me, just pretend that he didn't write sequels. My three-star book this month was The Night House by Joan Nesbo. This is a book that is hard to really describe because it's done in three parts, but the first part is the majority of it, and it's about this 14-year-old boy who's moved to a very small town because his parents, I believe, died in a fire, if I'm remembering correctly, and he's just mucking around with another boy one day, and they go into this phone booth, and he decides he's going to prank call somebody, but when he makes his friend do that prank call, his friend gets devoured by the receiver of the telephone. When people are like, hey, what happened to that kid you were hanging out with? And he tells them exactly what happened. They obviously don't believe him, and it goes from there. Then in parts two and three, the narrative is kind of switched up to the point where I can't even remember what I thought was the actual happenings 
of this book by the end of it. Because it just seemed that it was like, oh no, this probably didn't happen this way that we've been taught about it, it probably happened this way. But you could really choose to believe one way or the other, and I don't think it really worked for me personally. One of my four star reads, the first one being The Writing Retreat. This one is a book that is right up my alley. Obviously I like bookish books. And this one is about a person who was in a friendship breakup about a year ago and finds herself in a situation where she's going to be going on this writing retreat to the very secluded house of her very favorite writer. However, that person that she was friends with before and is no longer friends with will also be there, so we know there's going to be a tense situation there. And then, of course, when everybody arrives, it gets weird. If you're looking for really fleshed out characters, this is probably not going to be your thing, but I did enjoy my time with this book just trying to figure out what was going to happen, and I did enjoy seeing what people were writing while they were on this retreat and having these ridiculous circumstances thrown at them. And ultimately, this is not the type of book that I'm really reading too much into, I'm just along for the ride. Next we have a queer performance horror anthology called Demons and Death Drops. This one I believe has about 15 different tales in it. It's short stories, there's some poetry, there's also some comics. There's a bunch of different authors to explore in this one, so obviously you're going to like some more than others, but overall I gave this about a four star. I also read this while we were in a cabin in the woods. Very secluded, didn't have cell service, didn't have the internet, and there was a point where even though we're on the second story I had locked the balcony door and Chad was like, why did you do that? I'm like, I'm reading horror right now. Of course I locked the door. Next, changing gears completely, I read a kid's book that is from the time frame when I was a child, but I didn't read it when I was a kid, and that's Frindle. This is all about a kid who usually knows how to waste teachers' time enough that they don't really get a lot of homework in the classes where he's present, but when he gets to the fifth grade, he meets an adversary in his teacher because she sees right through his tactics. So when he puts his hand up and tries to ask about the dictionaries that are all around her room because she seems really into the dictionary, she's like, you know what, that's an interesting question. Why don't you look it up and do a presentation about it tomorrow? So he decides to do that, and during the course of that presentation, they also get into a discussion about how words mean what the society wants them to mean. And from that discussion, he decides that one of the ways he's going to try to get to this teacher is to change the word for the word pen. He is now calling all pens frindles. This causes a huge uproar, firstly in the school, because it gets all of his class to call them Frindles to the point where there's a sign in the school being like, stop calling them Frindles, that's not what they're called. But then it goes on to the whole town starts calling them Frindles, and then the nation calls them Frindles, and there's some guy that's also trademarked Frindle, even though he didn't come up with the idea of a Frindle. And this got to a, a much bigger scale than I expected going into this book, and I really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed how it was wrapped up at the end as well. Next we have a book called Belladonna. This it's about a girl who when she was an infant she was at a party with her parents and everybody at that party actually died because they ingested belladonna. However, she should have died and didn't. She should have died because she was having her mother's breast milk and she just didn't die. And then Death was like, huh, that's curious. I'm gonna keep checking in on this kid every once in a while because that's weird. Fast forward to when she's in her late teens and she's kind of been shoved off on different people in her family her entire life. And she's basically just waiting until she comes of age so she can collect her inheritance and try to find a suitor and move on with her life. Here's the thing about this book. I think it got a four star because of the reading experience and listening to the audiobook I really, really enjoyed. However, there's stuff to do with kind of the romance that's in here and kind of the romance triangle that's in here that I'm just like, I don't really like this if I think about it too hard. However, what I did really enjoy is her trying to figure out her death magic. All of that was super interesting to me. Next we have Did You Hear About Kitty Carr? This is a historical fiction book. I also consume this one as an audiobook. And this one has three people that we mostly see the perspectives of. In the present, we have the perspective of Elise. She is an actress. She comes from a pretty powerful black theatrical background. I believe her dad's a music producer. Her mom was also an actress. Her sisters are also famous in their own right. And all their life, they've been close to this white actress named Kitty Carr, who has recently passed and left her entire fortune to her and her sisters. When we get flashbacks to the past, we get flashbacks to a woman named Hazel and then eventually her daughter who is named Mary Magdalene. And as the story progresses, you come to figure out how their stories are intertwined. I picked this one up because somebody said if you liked these seven husbands of Ethel and Hugo but you wanted it to talk more about race issues this was one to pick up because this is definitely like an old Hollywood situation but this one also goes really deep into race relationships and I really appreciated that. 
Next we have a book that is really difficult to describe, but the more I think about it, the more I get out of it, and that's Time Shelter. This one is the one that was translated from Bulgarian, and it's an interesting time. It's all about this character who at some point met this other character, and they started corresponding as though the other character was in like the 1920s. And for a while I legitimately couldn't figure out if this was a time travel situation, or if there was just some playing pretend, or what was going on. It was also interesting because our main character is a writer, and sometimes he would just write as though this other character were a character in things that he was writing. And then eventually he's also meeting up with him and they're making these things that are basically time clinics. So for people who have Alzheimer's or other memory issues, they go to these clinics and they can live in a designated past from a certain year and time progresses as it did in the past. However, the ideas from these clinics then become ideas for an entire town and then eventually the EU is trying to decide when everybody should return to and start living from. From. And the more I think about this, the more it's such an interesting premise about how people like to look back at the past, want to live in the past, but then what happens when you're continuing to do that and you get to the point where the future just stopped because you rerouted back to the past, you just loop again? I have no idea. This one was definitely very interesting and I'm not at all sold that I got everything out of it that the author intended, so it's one of those ones that I feel like I could probably consume again and again and get more out of every time. My last four star read is All the Violet Tiaras. This is just a teeny tiny little essay book by Jean from Jean's Thoughts here on YouTube, who is also a friend of mine and with whom I also talked about the creation of this volume the last time I was in Europe when we finally got to meet in person for the first time. This one is all about queer myth retellings and the importance of those and kind of the resurgence of those and just how it's interesting that people really cling to the retelling of myths and how they can be queered or how you can look at the myths themselves from antiquity and decide whether or not you thought that those characters might have in fact been queer. It is an academic read which makes sense because Jean is an academic, she is a scholar, and I enjoyed it and now I just want to read all of the retellings that she mentioned in the volume. Volume. One of my 4.5 star reads, the first one being a category of read that I don't think I've actually covered on this channel previously, with the exception of when I talked about this in my weekly wrap-up, and that's Ziotin Recipes from the Palestinian Kitchen, which is a cookbook. What I really appreciated about this cookbook is not only was it talking about these different recipes, but there was so much flavor text throughout that really gave the context of the different regions that this author went to and some regions that this author couldn't go to, simply because there was no way she could actually legally gain access to those areas and therefore had to interview people who were from those areas but no longer there and were living in places where she could access them. There's also so much food in here that I just really wanted to make for myself. Next we have Nettle and Bone which is a fantasy by T. Kingfisher. This one has to do with a character who is in the middle of doing some impossible tasks in order to get some help on a pilgrimage of sorts where she wants to make sure that a prince perishes. What I really enjoyed about this is it's one of those books where you're just really trying to get the people together to help you in whatever quest you're going on, and the side characters are just so interesting. And I have yet to find something by T. King Fisher, no matter which genre I've read from her, that I've not enjoyed. I just really think she knows what she's doing. The next book on this list is something I referenced earlier in this video, and that's Remember Me by Christopher Pike. This was my favorite of his books when I was a teenager, and I knew I wanted to reread it, and I was really scared to reread it, because in the past couple of years I've reread other books by him that I would have read as a teenager and did not like them at all, so I was just like, I really hope this one holds up, and it did which was so nice. This is all about a character named Sherry Cooper, and as we meet her, she is about to go to a birthday party for a friend of hers with her boyfriend and a friend of hers, and I think some other people are also at the party. And as we meet her, we learn all these different dynamics in her life, such as she has an older brother that she absolutely adores. And he is actually dating one of her friends, who is also the daughter of their housekeeper, who she also adores. When we get to this party, there are some tense situations that are happening, and then all we know is the party ends by the fact that she is on the balcony and then she's suddenly no longer on the balcony and when she wakes up she is deceased and it takes her a while to figure that out. From there we continue to have her perspective as she tries to figure out 
what happened to her and as she follows this cop who's trying to figure out what happened to her. What I really enjoyed about rereading this is so many of these little details are stuck in my brain from when I was a teenager. So when I was going through this I was like oh I can see that he's setting up all of this information that once you know how this goes down all of this is not just random description it's actually helping you to solve the mystery along the way but it's done in such a way where you don't expect it to be important detail. Like I said before this one stands up definitely read this just pretty pretend that he didn't write sequels because they're very different and I did not enjoy them. Next we have What Lies in the Woods. This one is about a woman who when she was very very young was attacked by a serial killer but survived. Her and her best friends both survived and they actually were the reason why the serial killer actually went to jail. However when they find out that he died in prison she actually goes back to her very small town to see these friends and some emotions and dark secrets start to come up and they get to the point where they need to confront some things from their past. This one was right up my alley. It's got a podcast element, so there's somebody definitely in town trying to interview them for a podcast. It also has somebody sending cryptic messages to them, being like, I know that you lied, I know that he didn't actually do it, and they're just like, what the hell is this? Who is doing this to us? Why would they do this to us? And you also get to see how these three different characters who survived this situation and what has gone on in their lives and how it still impacts them to this point. It was an interesting read with a lot of twists and turns and I really enjoyed trying to figure out how it was going to end. Next we have Ink and Sigil. This is the fart... Next... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Next we have Ink and Sigil, which is the first book in a series that is set primarily in Glasgow, although it did crossover into Edinburgh for a little bit, which always makes me happy. This one is about a man named Al McVarish, and he is a sigil agent. And what that means is he basically is a border agent between the Fae and our world, and he also has a little bit of magic that is primarily delivered in these different sigils that he can write down on paper and then look at or show other people, and then there's a small term effect from whatever that sigil is. As we meet him, we find out that his seventh apprentice has died a horrible, unexpected death by choking on a scone that had raisins in it, which he basically is like, why would you eat a scone with raisins in it? That's your first problem. And as he's inspecting that scene, he finds out that there's a hobgoblin kind of secreted in this one room in his assistant's house, who apparently was about to be trafficked. So now he has to figure out why he was trafficking different fake creatures, how many others have been trafficked, and for what purpose. I've really enjoyed this one. I've read from this author before in a different series that was co-authored by somebody else, and I was really happy to see that a lot of the humor that I really enjoyed from that series is carried over into this with more of like a detective type of feeling, and also there's so many side characters that are just very very interesting, and I just want to see what's going to happen with all of them. Which means I'm going to have to see if my library carries the other books from this series series because I need to know what's going to go on. On to my five star reads. I only had two this month. The first one was This Winter by Alice Oseman. This is a very, very short book. If you're reading it as an audiobook, it's only about an hour long, and it has three people whose perspectives we see on one particular day, which is Christmas Day in the Spring household. First we have Tori, or Victoria Spring's perspective, then we have Charlie's perspective, and then for a very little part at the end we also have Oliver's perspective, who is their much younger brother. This is one of the many books in the Osmond universe, and it's just a very delightful way to hang out with these characters. Also, as a side note, today we tried to go to Shakespeare and Company, but they were doing their annual inventory, and we wandered around that area, and we actually found a Canadian bookstore in Paris called the Abbey Bookstore, and while I was in there, it's the type of place where like all of the shelves are only like this far apart, and it's really, really packed, and I found a copy of the Heartstopper coloring book, and I flipped through it specifically to see if there were any pages from the issue of the comic book where they are in France, and I found them, which was just so amusing to me, because we've been inside two major landmarks in Paris so far on this trip, the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre, and in both situations I turned to chat at some point and I was like, this right here, this area, was used in Heartstopper. I remember it exactly from the show. So it was also fun to open the coloring book and be like, hey, we were just here yesterday. And look, Nick and Charlie are there, and it's adorable. My favorite book of the month was Hijab Butch Blues. This is another audiobook I listened to, and this is a memoir by an unnamed author. I mean, this author has a pen name, that's Lamia H, but we don't know to whom that pen name is attributed, and that makes a lot of sense when you're reading this book. 
This is a memoir about a Muslim non-binary femme presenting person and their discussions of sexuality through the lens of different stories from the Quran. What I really enjoyed about this is often we see this dichotomy of you can be religious or you can be queer but you definitely can't be both which is just so false. And what I really enjoyed was seeing this person take these different stories from the Quran and how they actually started to see themselves in these different people from the Quran and how they could be interpreted as being queer and I just really thoroughly enjoyed that whole experience of it and this person just talking about their experiences trying to be both very very religious and also queer. It's a fantastic book I'm not going to do it any justice telling you about it besides just telling you to read it. Normally I would say that's all for this video but as I talked about before I am participating in the bookish bingo board from hell so let's see how I'm doing with that. I've already made the graphics so this is how I'm doing so far after one month of this challenge and this challenge obviously runs for the entire year. I haven't checked off something from all of the prompts yet, but there are prompts that I've checked off multiple things. For instance, this year I'm trying to read at least 10 book of the month books because I tend to get them and then forget that I've gotten them and I have a pile up of them that I haven't read and that's just useless. So this month I managed to read two from this category. I'm also trying to get through a bunch of books that I've just had on my TBR for ages and not read, so that's what a TBR veteran is and that's something that has to have been on my TBR for at least a year. And for that I've also read two. I could technically say I've read four but it feels a little bit like cheating because the two are Frindle and Remember Me and then I also read The Return and The Last Story but they're all in one big bind up so even though I count them individually as books I've decided for this category to just count them as one book. I didn't get to any ignored arcs this time around but now that I'm currently traveling and don't have as much access to physical books this is the time frame where I knew I was going to be reading ignored arcs anyway way, which is why I didn't read any in January. I read two different books that happened to be more than 400 pages, I didn't actually plan them to be, and both of them were audiobooks, so it feels like cheating, but I, I technically did it. I haven't done any of my random emoji reads, but eventually I will probably narrow down which ignored arcs to read based on emojis I get from random people, be it my best friend or I'll get Chad to pick one or something like that. I read four books that were published before 2000. I read three books from non-English speaking countries. I read one book from my 40 before 40 TBR, which by the way there's still space on that TBR. I still think I need at least one more book to go on that TBR, so if you have any suggestions let me know down below. And I didn't get to any of my library TBR veterans, which are library books that I've had on this list on my library app for ages but just haven't gotten to, and this is specifically my physical library books, so this is something that I'm not going to have any movement on unless I get those books out as audiobooks until at least May or June because obviously I'm here and my library is very far away. If you want to hear me talk more about these books or other books for that matter, the playlist for my weekly entertainment wrap-ups is always linked down below. If you've read any of these, please let me know what you thought of them down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a Ko-fi account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that, as always, is down below. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye! Au revoir!